replay on YouTube, okay? Um, YouTube probably won't have as much information as TikTok because TikTok is where it's at, right? <laughs> so go ahead and hit that double tap screen for me, you all. Uh, if you're new here to the page and the channel, welcome. Uh, don't worry, you will not be disappointed, all right? Um, let me just get on one other platform and then we can go ahead and get started, okay? Um, I would like to be at at least 5,000 likes before we get started. So TikTok, you all go ahead and double tap the screen. When you see me on this page and this channel and I got screens up behind me, background board, just know you're getting ready to be in class and session, okay? <laughs> so class is in session right now. Tonight, uh, we are going over Navy Federal Pledge Loan, which is kind of what I have here behind me. But I'm also going to go over how we purchased our dump truck this past weekend, utilizing this strategy. OK, um, so YouTube, I am on TikTok as well. So let's go. Let's go. Let's go. And then I'll just jump on Facebook on my phone. Uh, so again, TikTokers, hit that double tap for me, double tap, double tap, double tap, and then we will go ahead and get started. Uh, anybody that's on YouTube, hit the like button for me, share, follow, like. Let's roll, okay? We are in class in session tonight. I'm not going to use the board just yet because I want to show you all the screen here that I have behind me, okay? Um, TikTok, y'all being real lazy. We, we, it should be real easy to get to 5,000 likes, baby. We got more than enough people on here to get to 5,000 likes so I can explain to you what this screen here is behind me. Hey, Miss Darcy. I haven't been on live in a while. So don't worry. You, you, you haven't been on live in a while. <laughs> I haven't been on live in a while. I'll say that. Uh, should I block uh, Keisha going on there asking for everybody for some money? You say you be on everybody live asking for some money. Miss Prosperity. <laughs> I love TikTok. Y'all will call them out, baby. Y'all will call them out, okay? Y'all will go ahead and call them out. That's what we need. Call them out. Call them out. Thank you, Gemini lady. Uh... I'm just getting on one more platform, y'all. So TikTok is the only platform that can actually see my screen up behind me. So if you all want to chime on over, you are welcome to. I'm Patrice L on TikTok. Don't worry, the live. I haven't even started yet. We just getting round up and prepared, okay? So all y'all that's asking what we talking about, I will let you know in 800 likes. We almost there. <laughs> double tap that screen don't be lazy don't be lazy all right okay so i am on all platforms i'm on tiktok i'm on youtube and i'm on facebook facebook i will suggest that you go over to my youtube channel i'm uh my tiktok page i'm patrice l stewart on tiktok um that's the best place for you all to actually see everything okay that, that i'm actually talking about so i have a screen up behind me right now on tiktok that i can't put up on youtube or facebook all right so just letting you know i'm gonna put the link down here in the comments uh that way if you wanted to tap on over you can because that's a way better platform for you to kind of see everything all right TikTokers, let's roll, let's roll, let's roll. All right, what's the screen behind me? First, let me introduce myself because every single day we have different people on here who are listening. Um, but the other thing that I do want to ask you all is listen to the information. Some of the stuff that I share with you, you may or may not know of. You may have never heard of this information before, okay? So keep an open mind with what I'm explaining and sharing with you tonight. All right. I don't like a lot of negative naysayers, so we block and delete all the time. Right. Let's roll. My name is Patrice L. Stewart. I am the realist tax and business strategist 
that you will ever meet. All right. I have over 18 years of experience in the tax, accounting, banking, financial services industry. All right. I worked for a big box bank for six years. Um, I have been in accounting and tax industry for over 16 years. All right. Um, I left corporate America in 2013. I have been completely 1000% self-employed since 2013. All right. But I have been an entrepreneur since 2008. I started my company while I still worked for corporate America. All right. So part of what I do is not only do I prepare taxes, right, but I also do business strategy. I also do um, coaching and business coaching. I'm very big in the entrepreneur world and space. All right. So one of the other things that I do is I use my personal time to get on social media and educate educate you all, educate the community on different topics, all right? We talk about business, we talk about taxes, we talk about credit. Um, in this particular live that I'm going over tonight, I'm going over the Navy Federal Pledge Loan again, all right? This has been a really big topic, especially on TikTok. Um, and I want to explain to you all again this loan, right, why you may or may not want to do something like this, okay? Um, and let's just go ahead and get started, all right? So there I go. That's my introduction. So the screen that I have here behind me with TikTok, right? I'm showing you all, let me move out the right real quick. I'm showing you all in this particular screenshot, this is my actual Navy Federal account. So last week, I decided to go ahead and do another pledge loan, all right? My business partner and I both, took funds from our businesses. So if, you, if you're not familiar, I have more than one company. So I have another business with my business partner, which is a junk removal business, okay? Most, he usually maintains and manages that I handle the finances, okay? We were looking to purchase a dump truck, okay? We didn't want to pay a lot of interest, even, even though we both have good credit. When you're doing business loans and equipment loans, um, sometimes the interest rates are still kind of high, even when you have good credit. So what we decided to do was instead of paying $30,000 for a dump trailer over a three-year period, we could just purchase the dump trailer outright for $15,000. We drove to Kentucky, okay? So this past Saturday, we drove to Kentucky, purchased the dump trailer outright, pay cash for it, right? So what do we? how do we do that? Taking the funds from the business, right, and then acquiring this loan, that is what you see here behind me. So I've shared with you all that I've done this pledge loan before. This is the this is the new one. I just did this one. All right. <laughs> Literally, I just did this one. I'm going to change the screen for you so you can actually see the breakdown of the loan behind me on TikTok. TikTok, you guys, TikTok sees everything. All right. So TikTok is getting a lot more information than everybody else. All right, this is the, okay, y'all, hold on, it's sinking. There you go, okay. So this is the new loan that we just, that I just did on the 18th. So I did another $30,000 loan. The interest is still 2.25%. This is the new payment, the 529.38. As you see, the next payment is not due until June 25th. 2023. Okay. Now, if you are not familiar with this pledge loan, Patrice, why would you do something like this? Right. Prime example. In this case, we wanted to purchase equipment. I could have easily went into the business account and just paid for the, the truck outright. Right. But guess what? What does that do for me? If I would have just paid for the, for the truck outright, the 15,000, just say 16,000 after taxes and all that stuff. What would that would have done to my business account? That would have depleted my business account $16,000, right? So in this case, as I've shared with you all, when you're doing this pledge loan, it's literally taking the money that you have and you're borrowing against it, okay? So I wanted to do some additional loan and funding. So I made it a flat 30,000, right? Originally it was supposed to be for 15,000. But we took his 15,000 and I took my 15,000 
and put the two together. And we did. And I did a pledge loan. OK, let me also say this is a personal loan. This is not a business loan. All right. So I'm, I'm intertwining a business transaction with this personal loan, if that makes sense. OK, um, but this is not the screen that I wanted to show y'all. I really wanted to show y'all the other screen that shows the actual interest rate. Let me see. Will it download? Because it said it needed to download. All right. Here we go. So here's the full details of the loan. OK, anybody that is not on TikTok, you're really missing out. I would suggest y'all go over to TikTok, OK, because all, all the information is on TikTok. Facebook, I really just wanted to let y'all know I was live. Go over to TikTok, baby, because I'm, I'm it, it don't make no sense for you to be here. YouTube, I'm going to keep this up just so you all can hear the concept of, of it behind me. OK, um, <laughs> I'm, I'm just keeping it real. All right. I'm not a Facebook fan anymore. TikTok and YouTube are my number one platforms anyway. So this is the breakdown of the loan. 30,000. The member, remember last week you guys kept asking me, is the interest rate still 2.25%? Bam, it's still 2.25%. Remember last week we were like, oh, is it 2.7? Is it this? Is it that? Here we go. I just did this loan on 518 last week. All right. It's 2.25%. Finance charges. This is where a lot of you all get caught up at, right? This whole finance charge issue. This is why I wanted you to see it in black and white, because so many of you all get caught up on the finance, and that's that's where you block. That's where you that's where you're mentally blocked, and your mind is not thinking, right? <laughs> okay. So I wanted you to see what the finance charges will be. Also, this is the finance charge if I actually take. 60 months to pay the loan down, right? 60 months is five years, a five-year term, okay? 60 months is a five-year term. If I actually paid this loan for the full five-year term, which I'm not, I'm going to pay it off earlier, I'm only paying $1,700.62 in interest for five years to be able to have access to $30,000 again. You get what I'm saying? So, those of you that be so stuck to see the bigger picture. Five years, I'm going to have $30,000 again. So I pay $1,700 in interest to have $30,000 again. Baby, that ain't nothing. We not tripping off that. You get what I'm saying? So I need y'all to think bigger. That's why I said you. some of y'all be blocked and blinded. Okay? The monthly payment is $529.38. Now, this is me taking my cash from my business account and borrowing my own money, right? So now, guess what? We were able to go and acquire this particular um, vehicle. So now, this is what we have. This is what I went to go buy, okay? Okay. This is what we went to go get with the money. So now when we went and sat down with the with the people, we walked in with cash. We walked in with what I say, buying power, right? This, this is another term for that buying power, okay? We walked in with cash. We walked in with buying power. So we paid about $16,000 after taxes and stuff for this particular dump trailer, okay? We've already made $2,500 since Monday. We went and got the trail on Saturday. Monday and Tuesday, both of those days, $2,500. So, right, so we already starting to make the money back that we paid for the trailer. See what I'm saying? But, but also, the other thing with that is we took our own money, bought the trailer, because on average, the interest rates were like 15% for this trailer, even with good credit. So we would have ended up paying about $30,000 over a three-year period. Why? Right. So this is what I tell y'all. If you have the cash, this is a way for you to make your money work for you. You're using your own money. You go get what you need. You need to get a vehicle, get a dump trailer, get whatever you need to do with the money. Right. But now you're paying yourself back over time and at a two point two five percent interest rate. You get what I'm saying? 
There's no, there's no business loan that you're going to get at a 2.2% rate. You get what I'm saying? That is not happening. SBA, PPP loans, all that stuff is over with, right? So those were the only ways that you were able to get this kind of money before. And you're not getting this. The only way you're doing this is if you're doing this. I have not read one single comment, nothing. I'm just then I'll stop right now and take a moment and I'll go through and answer some of you all questions. Uh, what I do need you to do, though, is a double tap countdown session. OK, let's roll. So we I know we have a lot of new people here. You're just chiming in. It's OK. I haven't even been on the full 10 minutes. I just logged on at 730. OK, it's 742. I'm usually on here about an hour with you. All right. So you got plenty of time. OK. But what I do need those of you to do that are watching how you help me and this page and my channel is that is how you support me. You take this finger and you double tap the screen. OK, this is called community over here. All right. On this page and channel, we share information. We want more of you all to live better, to do better. We want more of you all to be knowledgeable about financial literacy. I want more of you all to understand strategy regarding taxes, regarding credit, regarding business. So again, I'm on here on my free time tonight, <laughs> all right? And I'm not on free time because I actually am in the office filing taxes. We got clients that are waiting, right? But again, my passion is to educate the community. So one of the ways that you help me help you is to just make sure that those hearts never go away, okay? I should really be at about a hundred thousand dollars, about a hundred thousand likes right now with what I just dropped you. Okay. <laughs> so another thing is, is I teach you what school doesn't teach you. I teach you what you would never learn in the American education system because it's whack. It's really y'all would be mad at me, but it's really a waste of time. But that's a whole nother other conversation. Because how many of you are grown in your thirties and forties and you still don't know credit? You still don't know how taxes work. You still don't know uh, how to make your money work for you. You don't know the importance of life insurance. You went to school for nothing, right? I have a degree. I went and got a whole college bachelor's degree. Thank God I'm using my degree. I'm, I was a business administration major, right? But a lot of us, we are brainwashed in this country to believe and think a certain way. And so a lot of you guys... When I first started talking about this, y'all were like, what? Why would you do that? This is stupid. This is that. It's because you're uneducated. It's because you don't know. Because your American system is a lie. Okay? So, let's roll. Let me get to, uh, let me take this down behind me, though, because I really can't see y'all questions, I think, because the background is white. So, if you want to see it real quick before I remove it. This is a Navy Federal Pledge loan that I just did last week. I did a $30,000 loan. Many of you are going to ask the question. I haven't even looked, but I'm going to just see if you asked it. All right. <laughs> you probably did. Where did the $30,000 come from? It was mine. Okay. It's mine. It's cash. Okay. This loan is a secured loan. So I want to I wanna say that. Let me throw that out there. This is not an unsecured loan. If you have ever followed my page on my channel, I talk to you about two different types of credit. One is secured, one is unsecured. Those are the two different types of credit. This is a secured loan, all right? Now I can break down some more information because I want to take this off from behind me because I can't see y'all questions, okay? So there we go. Um, YouTube, since you all can't see much, <laughs> I'll answer any questions you have first, uh, Mink Mob. What's up, Mink Mob? What's up, Mink Mob? Brandon Hicks, what's up, family? Uh, you say, thank you. You are the best. Got my 20K pledge loan. Let's go, Mink Mob. <laughs> Let's go, Mink Mob, at that 2.25%. Uh, you say, I had to come tell you that. Thank you. Thank you for letting me know. Uh, BZ80, you say, I'm a new sub. Mink referred you. Great content. Thank you, BZ. Keep watching. Tap on over to my TikTok channel, though. I'm Patrice L. Stewart on TikTok. You'll get a lot more information for what I'm sharing with you right now, okay? Like I said, I'm going to keep the screen up on YouTube for you all, uh, but I would rather most of you come over here to the TikTok. All right. Now, because I'm just not looking, y'all, some of these questions have went away. I just want you to know how the lives work. 
how the lives work is as more of y'all start asking 21 questions, more start going away. So as I said, <laughs> I am just now looking at the questions. So I'm going to scroll up as best as I can. If I miss your question, don't think that I'm purposely ignoring you, you know, okay? And I can't answer every single person. So I'm going to just try to pick and choose what we got. So the first one I see is Stina B. Are pledge loans only for business owners? So actually, pledge loans are a personal um, credit product, okay? So that's what I did say. This particular loan is on the personal side. They do offer, some banks do offer business secured loans. It's really, uh, it's, uh, what's the word I want to say? Uh, it's going to be different for every bank, right? Even with Navy Federal, they do have a formal business uh, loan, but it is usually based off of some type of collateral that you have to have, either equipment or a car. Um, so this particular loan is strictly for personal, okay? Uh, what does your credit have to be because they denied me? So Rose, normally 99.9% .9 of the people get approved for this loan, uh, even with bad credit, right? The biggest thing is, is you probably have something on your credit report if you got denied because banks usually would not deny you for this loan, all right? Uh, why? Because they're making money, right? Did you see the screenshot with them? They're, the Navy Federal is going to make $1,700 in interest, but they're not going to make $1,700 in interest because I'm going to pay the loan down for four or five years, right? But that's the maximum that they will make. So they're making money. It would, it would make sense for them to approve you. For those of you all who say you got denied, what I would suggest is you need to pull your credit report. You need to pull your true credit report, not Credit Karma, okay? Because Credit Karma is not accurate and it does not show every single account. You need to go to myfico.com, okay? Myfico, M-Y-F-I-C-O.com and pull your, two, your true credit report and three bureau scores. You need to go through and analyze and look at your credit report and see what's reporting. Because for a bank to deny you for a loan that they can make money on, a secured loan, it's something on your credit, okay? Um, that's the best that I could say. It's something on your credit because nine times out of 10, they not denying that at all. All right. So for you to get that 2.25 interest rate, you have to have near perfect credit. No, people with a 500 credit score gets the interest rate. That's Navy Federal's uh, interest rate right now. I did a workshop last week on Navy Federal where I gave you all 20 credit unions. I gave you a list of 20 credit unions. My workshop was $35, okay? In that workshop, I gave you a detailed list of credit unions that you can go to and do this particular loan with. Let me also state that. Navy Federal is not the only bank that you can do this with. One, I use that as the title because one, that's who I have and deal my loan with. But two, I'm going to be just real honest with y'all. I'm the realist. It's clickbait. Everybody want to know what's Navy Federal. Navy Federal, Navy Federal, Navy Federal. It's clickbait. I ain't going to ask clickbait to get you over here. But once you understand what I'm talking about, you clearly see that I have the knowledge and understanding, right? Um, but that's also where I did my loan. But there are several other credit unions that you can work with. This loan is not only with Navy Federal. The bank terminology is called a savings secured loan, okay? That's the bank terminology. With Navy Federal, it's called the Navy Federal Pledge Loan. But with any other bank, if you want to Google saving secured loan, you'll be able to see all the banks near you, around you that offer this type of loan. Also, do not do this with a standard banking institution. Only do this with a credit union, okay? Only do this with a credit union. You will not get this same rate at a Chase or a Bank of America. Chase and BOA don't even offer it. Uh, the bank that I know of that does offer it, BMO Harris Bank, their rate would, no, would nowhere near be 2%, 3%. DCU.org, I think their rate right now is about 2.75% for the loan. Um, I didn't really look up. I don't remember everybody else. I did the workshop last week. I did a whole hour Zoom workshop. It was $35 if you want access to the replay. Um, you can you can DM me or you can click the link in my bio. All right. Um, but yeah, so the rates are going to be different for every credit union. 
Navy Federal is the lowest credit union right now that is offering this particular loan. So you may pay 2.5, 2.75, 2.95. You may even pay 3%, 3.5%. But anything under 4%, you win it anyway. Because again, you would never get that kind of rate uh, with a standard banking institution. Credit unions matter. And I, I do a lot of business with credit unions. Again, this is something we're not taught. Again, you're taught to go to big box banking institutions when a lot of you all are not even familiar with credit unions and how, how dope they are. You, you, you can change your whole life by being in a credit union. Um, exactly, Lucius. Luscious lips. You said that's almost paying no interest. Exactly. You get it. <laughs> uh, I have Navy Federal, but I didn't get approved for a credit card. Okay, it happens. You can apply for um, an account again every 30 days. Every 30 days, if you ever were denied for a card, a credit card, a loan, you can apply again in a 30-day period, okay? Um, but I would say look at the denial letter. Usually they send you all a denial letter as to why they denied you. And so you want to read that. A lot of times it would tell you why they denied you, that you got a bankruptcy, you have a public record, you got too many collections, you got too many late payments. A lot of times when they send you that denial letter, you all don't check the mail. It comes in a plain letter. Uh, but it's very some, it's something that you actually should look at for every loan that you do or credit card and you ever got denied for. They always send you a communication as to why they denied you. You definitely want to pay attention to that because it will tell you what you need to fix on your credit. So don't go apply again in 30 days and you didn't fix the stuff that they denied you for. You get what I'm saying? Um, so you got to make sure that you do that. Congo daddy, you welcome. <laughs> you are welcome. Okay, y'all, I think I refreshed the screen again. So some people comments went away. Now I'm at, I am Chris. So Chris says, I have a 30K limit. What should I do? I, I'm not on here to give you advice about what you should do. I would say learn, figure out how to turn that 30K into 60K. Any and everything that I do, I'm understanding and figuring out how can I turn this money that I got today into double, into triple. So if I got a $30,000 credit card, uh, baby, I'm going to be starting some kind of business. You need to be looking at uh, businesses, mobile home investing, t-shirt business. How can you turn that money into more money? Because the problem is, is when we get cards and loans, you want to go and acquire more debt. You want to go and buy things, right? Cars, clothes, rims, Gucci bags, all that stuff, that don't make you no money, right? So you got to focus on making more money. That's what you got to focus on. So you should be investing those credit cards, these loans that you're taking out and getting. You should be putting that into something that's going to make you more money. What you should do, I have no clue, baby. I got 800,000 ideas. I don't know what you want to do. <laughs> um, all right, let's roll. Let's roll. I see you. I see you. I see you. I am Chris. Oh, you asked that question a couple of times. Keep asking. I like that. That's how you get your question answered, being specific. But this is the other thing I'm going to tell y'all. I spent so much money um, Figuring out in the beginning, right? When I first started my business in 2008, I didn't really get serious with my business until I got let go in corporate America in 2013. I was what you call a hustler, right? I was over here. I was selling purses. I was selling body wraps. I was selling this. I was selling that. But guess what? When you all over the place, people don't look at you and take you serious. You look like a jack of all trades, which means you mastered none, right? So I would say, don't go into it strictly for the money, because once you understand how things work, you, you may not like that, right? So I no longer focus on telling business uh, mentees to go for the money. I say, go for what you love. What is this something that you could look at and you could, if you didn't have to work a nine to five today, what is something that you would want to do that could make you money, right? For me, I love speaking. I love getting on here talking to y'all about taxes, credit. I'm a speaker, right? So now I'm getting ready to transition from being out of my tax office to actually being a speaker, right? I'm taking, a, I have a coach. I have a speaking program. I'm getting ready to be 
booked for events, right? That's what I'm passionate about. I know how to do taxes, but I ain't passionate about taxes. You get what I'm saying? So you want to figure out what can you do that you could wake up every day and do with ease. That is where I would suggest that you look versus just looking for the money out of it. Now, you want it to make you some money, but you also want to make sure that it's something that you're going to stick with. Because I spent over $100,000 wasting money because I was doing all these different businesses because I was just focused on making some money, right? But then, like I said, you you think about it and you're like, I don't even want to do that. I don't like that. That ain't what I want to do, <laughs> right? So I don't want you to waste $100,000 like I did. I want you to really think about what you could do. Um, do you do that? Okay. That's the same question. How do I pay down debt with the pledge loan? Well, one, you got to have the money to do the pledge loan for one. That's, that's what I was telling y'all. The pledge loan is not an unsecured loan. So if you guys are looking for an unsecured loan and then go and do things with, that's different, okay? But what I'm showing you is taking the money that you already have and have access to. Right. And, and the example that I like to give is, let's say um, you this your emergency fund, if you emergency fund, but do 90 percent of Americans do not, uh, not. Let me not let me not say 90, probably 70 percent of Americans do not have an emergency fund because you're already struggling to pay your bills living check to check. Right. So the whole point of this is to make sure that if you have an emergency fund, if you got five thousand, ten thousand dollars put up in a savings account right? God forbid something happened. Now you don't want to go and take your emergency money and spend the money, right? This is how now I'm going to bring the screen back up. This is how now you can use this strategy that I'm showing you on how you can keep your money or at least pay yourself back over time, okay? So on the 17th, I wired $30,000 into my Navy Federal account. Let's just say this is my emergency fund, okay? This is my emergency fund. This is the last $30,000 that I got to my name. I wired it in, into Navy Federal. On that same day, I called Navy Federal and I said, hey, I want to apply for the savings secured loan, right? Again, nine times out of 10, most of y'all should get approved. They're going to send you the loan documents. You're going to fill them out, do the application, bam. Within 24 hours, they're going to give you whether you were approved or not, okay? Once you sign your paperwork, I signed my paperwork. I got my paperwork before three o'clock that afternoon. They had approved the loan. The next day, remember, I also shared with you all that it took three days last time to process. Baby, they didn't moved up because now I got the money the very next day. You see the 18? Deposit loan proceeds. So now what happened? I was able to take that 30000 in my emergency fund put a loan against it, and then they gave me $1,000 back the next day. So now, whatever I need to do with that emergency money, I can go and do it. And now I'm paying myself back over time with the loan. And here's the breakdown, right? So this is it. So there's the loan at the 2.25% interest rate. There's the finance charge that I will pay. And again, this finance charge of $1,762.78 is only if it takes me five years to pay this loan. I'm not, I'm not going to take the whole five years to pay this 30 grand back. I probably had this paid before the end of the year, right? So, um, and there we go. 60 month time. Those are the total payments. That's your monthly payment. The biggest thing is going to be you need to be able to afford your monthly payment. So whatever loan that you're doing for whatever dollar amount, you need to be able to afford the monthly payment. If you're not planning on paying it off early, if you're going to do the whole full term, that is what I would say is going to be the biggest thing is to make sure that you can afford your monthly payment. Because, again, this reports to your credit to the credit bureau. So you do not want to do this loan and then you can't afford the monthly payment. Now, in the event that you cannot afford your monthly payment, what did I say? Call the bank and close the loan out. 
because now it won't hurt you. You will just forfeit whatever balance you didn't finish paying, okay? Because remember, you got the $30,000 already. So technically, you got the money to spend and do whatever you want to do with it. This loan just allows you to pay yourself back over time. So at the end of this five-year term, I'm going to have $30,000 available again. You get, you get what I'm saying? So now it makes a lot more sense to do it because I'm able to take the money today, spend it, but now I'm able to pay myself over the next five years and I'm going to have $30,000 again. You win it. It's a win-win situation. And then, like I said, if for some reason you can't afford the monthly payment anymore, all you're doing is calling the bank and you're going to close the loan out. So that way it doesn't report late. You do not want to report late payments. You do not want to mess your credit up. So the biggest thing is keeping up with that, keeping up with your monthly payments and making sure that you do not mess your credit up. Because the whole point of this is to keep the money but also build your credit. And that's the other thing. That's the other benefit is it actually builds your credit. My score went up 50, 60 points or even more once I paid down 90% of that loan, right? So um, now let me get back to some other questions. Hold on. Okay, so I just wanted to clearly put that out there. Clearly put that out there. So that way you know and understand the difference. This is a secured Long, so you all do have to come up with the money, all right. Um, so you say, What do I need to do to get started? I always get denied. Yeah, if you're getting denied for stuff, y'all gotta pull your credit. Your credit is so important, be and and it, and again, I'm teaching you what the American school system does not teach, right? What the American school system does not teach is that America is built off of debt. And credit. So unlike other countries where cash is king, cash is not king in the USA. You can literally have zero dollars in the bank, but a 700 credit score and you can go and win. You can go and change your whole life with changing your credit. So this is another reason why I get on here and especially for indigenous people of color, because in our communities, these conversations, we do not have enough. Right. Uh, we real big with burning up some credit, right? You real quick to get a credit card and then not pay it off. That's the worst thing to do. So the whole point is to change your mindset for you to understand how to work the system legally with the country that you're living in. You're living in the United States of America, so you need to know and understand how to work the American system. And that's what I'm showing you tonight. So it's starting with your credit. So for those of you that are on here saying, I'm being denied for this, I'm being denied for that. Stop applying for stuff, for one, because every inquiry that you're putting on your credit report, you just messing yourself up. Every time you run your credit, that's a three, anywhere between three to four points, sometimes five points that you're dropping your score, right? So stop doing that. That means you need to look at the source. The source is your credit report. Pull your credit report. Like I said, go to myfico.com and pull your three bureau credit reports. That's the truest accurate credit report. Do not go on Credit Karma, all right? You got to actually see what's being reported, and then you have to fix that. You got to get those collections off. You got to dispute those collections. You got to look at and see if you got a bankruptcy. Do you have a judgment? Do you have a repo? All of those things affect your credit. So if you have any of that on there, yes, sometimes even for secured credit, the bank is like, no, you got way too much debt on here. You got too much history of not showing that you could pay your bills, right? Because that's what you're doing when you're applying for loans, even in this case. Even in this case where you're putting the money up, it's still a loan, right? So when you're applying for loans and credit cards, the banks have to know that you can afford these payments and that you're responsible with paying your credit. If your credit show that you all your stuff is late, you don't pay your bills on time, you got three cars that, that got repoed, baby, you look bad. You look real bad. And so I understand we go through stuff in life, but I, I need you to know and understand the game because they're not going to tell you that, right? So the underwriter is looking at you like you know, we are denying you, <laughs> all right? So that's how it work. Um, how can you use the cash? If it's in a pledge loan, hopefully, Tierra, you were on here and you saw that because I definitely explained how that happens. 
uh, what will you do next after the 30K? So like I said, with my 30K, I went and took half of it and we went and bought a dump trailer for my junk removal business. The other 30K, I just, the other 15, I mean, 14,000, I just put back into my business account. If it's a, so I don't know if you could do a joint loan with the pledge loan. Uh, that's a question that you will want to ask the bank. I don't know that question offhand. Um, yeah, if your debt to rate, if your debt to ratio income, if your debt to income ratio is not good, I would say wait, P. Hudson. Um, I would say wait. Mob U73, congratulations on starting your commercial cleaning business. I'm all for entrepreneurship. Let me move my head out the way a little bit. Oh, let me try to turn it this way for y'all. There we go. YouTube, I know I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm really on the screen today versus really on the board. So hopefully the information that I'm sharing with you all, you can still kind of get it. Uh, but again, I do have a screen showing on TikTok. No. So the 30K does not mean you got 60. <laughs> I don't know why y'all always think that. Okay, let me show you the other screenshot. Cause y'all, y'all always say that. Let me, let me explain it one more. Let me show you the other screenshot. Okay. Just so you can understand what happened. All right. So this is it. I deposited $30,000. That's the bank wire. You all are thinking that it's 60, but it's not. It make you feel like that. Right. But it's not. So I put this $30,000 in there. So that's me, right? So that's me. That's not them giving me the money. So I wired the $30,000. This is them debiting it and putting a hold on it. Because once you wire the money in, the money has to be sitting in your savings account when you call. So when you call to do the loan, the money has to already be in your savings account, okay? So when you call, whatever amount you have, they're going to debit that. Okay, they call it the shares. And then once they put the loan on the system, they're going to give you the $30,000 back. So I, I deposited the 30. They put a hold on the funds and then they're going to give me my $30,000 back. So it's not 60 because it's the same 30 that I put up, if that makes sense. You get what I'm saying? But now I have a $30,000 loan showing on my Navy Federal and I'm paying myself back over time, okay? So hopefully that makes a little bit more sense to you. And I don't want to be skipping other people, so let me scroll up to the top because uh, I, I just looked at a couple of the questions that was at the bottom. So let me scroll back up to the top because I don't want to skip around. All right, so... It's, so with Navy Federal, it's called the pledge loan. But if you do this bank with another credit union, it's called a savings secured loan. So if you type in savings secured loan in Google, then it will show you different credit unions. And again, do this only with a credit union. All right. You are not doing this with a standard big box banking institution. You are only doing this with a credit union. All right. Um, Moni, good. I see you caught the live. Hey, I'm glad you was able to catch the live, Moni. So Sam the Bull, you say, do you recommend the early 90 day payoff? If you can, yes. That was the strategy that I use. So now I have two loans on my account uh, from Navy Federal. But that was the exact strategy that I used last year when I did this loan. Uh, I paid it. And I paid it in less than 90 days. I paid the balance down. I thought I had took a screenshot of that, but I probably didn't want to show y'all all my information with my Navy Federal account. So I may not have it on here. <laughs> I'm showing y'all a lot of info on here, okay? 
And then just so you can other just so you can also see that it's my page. That's my dog socks. Right? So you know again, these are my screenshots. I always come with receipts. I always got proof because y'all got so many fake gurus on the internet today that want to be somebody, right? So <laughs> I always come with receipts. Okay. So this is my phone, my dog. And there it is right there. $30,000 was deposited into your account on 5-18-2023. Bam, right? So that matches the information that I have already showed you, okay? But yeah, I don't got that screenshot. I thought I had the screenshot of like all of my Navy Federal accounts and what I had on there. Um, yeah, I don't want to show y'all that because I don't got my stuff blocked off. So we just gonna sh we just gonna let you see the other one. We just gonna let you see the new one. But I do have another thirty thousand dollar loan that I did last year, and I paid on ninety percent. So I only have um um a four thousand dollar balance on that one. Oh, I do got a screenshot of that one because that's the one we went over early. So this was the one that I did last year for the thirty thousand. Same interest rate, 2.25%, right? But you see the date right there says 4-2022. So I did the same loan last year, but I, what I did was I did pay it down um, within 90 days. And so this is what the current balance is on that loan right now. So now that loan is, the balance is 4,000. Uh, I still haven't made another payment. I share with y'all, I haven't made a payment on this loan since I paid down 90% last year. So I don't have to make another payment to win. What does that say? May 25th, 2026. So me paying that $25,000 covered my payment for four whole years. So it's reporting to the credit bureaus that's paid on time. It has been reporting to the credit bureau since last year. I have not made a payment since June of last year. Okay. So this is, again, another strategy. I use this particularly to build my credit. Um, because I have shared with you all on my page and my channel, I'm a business owner. And what do I teach you all as being an entrepreneur and a business owner? We own nothing. You control everything, but we own nothing personally. The business owns everything. So I don't own anything personally. So I needed something on my credit report to show valid, right? To show an actual line or something reporting because I don't really have anything reporting because everything is in my business name. To the car that I drive, to the house that I own, to my rental property is all under my businesses, right? So we talked about that. That's a whole nother other conversation, right? So if you can do the 90% payoff way, that's, that's a play. That's a strategy, okay? If not, don't worry. You are not required to pay this loan off 90%. I want y'all to know that. The biggest reason why I'm sharing this with you is I want you to know and understand what's available to you. So that way you're not um, just blowing your money. You get what I'm saying? Or in the event you had an emergency, you're not using all of your emergency funds. This is a way for you to pay yourself back over time. All right. Because ultimately at the end of the term, you'll have the money back. So don't feel that you have to pay this loan off 90% immediately. All right. That's just a strategy that a lot of us use. Uh, how long after opening the savings account should I apply for this loan? Honestly, again, I want to share something with you because the banks have been hit hard, right? So I personally still tell my clients, even if you are doing a, a secure loan, I still say wait 30 to 60 days. That's just my personal opinion. You can always apply. If they give it to you, great. If they deny you, then you got to wait 30 days and then apply again. But I will say if you're going through Navy Federal, uh, they have changed a lot of stuff because the cousins have been acting them up, right? So all the bad, bogus people that's doing all the scamming and the fraud, right? They have hit these banks uh, extremely hard. And Navy Federal has been hit really hard. Um, so a lot of their processes have changed. So I personally tell my clients, to wait probably a solid 30 to 60 days. Use the account. Put money in your account. Use your debit card. Let them see that you're a real person that is planning on using the account. Because what you all don't understand in the banking system is people open up bank accounts, they will deposit a check, they will apply for a loan, and then the next day, they gone. 
because it's a lot of people out here that's doing a bunch of bogus stuff, right? I'm gonna just call them the cousins, right? So a lot of stuff that the cousins do affect us. Those of us who are trying to be productive members of society, right? We are affected by what everybody else is doing. So unfortunately, a lot of stuff has changed with Navy Federal um, and it's not the same that it used to be, okay? So I know some people that got 800 credit scores and they still get a $500 credit card. And they like, why did they only give me a $500 credit card when I got a $10,000 Amex card and I got a $20,000 Chase card? Well, that's why. Because maybe federal like, uh, no, nah, we need to see that you're going to be good. Uh, no, nah, we need to see your track record, right? <laughs> so don't be alarmed when that happens. Um, they also do have a reconsideration department that you could call to see if you can get your uh, cards or loans increased. But just know and understand the banking system has been hit heavy by a lot of the bullshit people. OK. Um, all right. Again, it's called the Save and Secure Loan. That's the banking terminology for it. Uh, oh, yeah. If you owe them some money, then don't go to them. You better go look for another credit union. And then also, y'all might be in check systems. You know, you stay in check systems for five years. So there's there's more than check system. You got Lenovis, Lenov what is it? Lenovis, Lenovis. You got check systems. You got a couple of different reporting comp agencies now. So if you all owe the banks, you let a you you burnt up an account. That's what we call it. You burnt up an account. You you may need to check check systems before because that's the other thing. If you in check systems, that's another reason why y'all getting denied. Because if you owe any banking institution, them banks like nah, we ain't going. Because again, your track record. So this is why I say it's important for us to know this kind of stuff because we all been there. When you in your 20s, you know, you be out here doing stuff, running amok. You ain't really worried about your credit. You like, oh, forget that little credit card, right? But then as you grow up and you want to actually start being a productive member of society, you want to buy a house, you want to buy a car, right? You want to get a loan. Now you have to actually be accountable for those accounts that you messed up. So either you got to pay them, either you got to work with them, you got to dispute them, you got to pay them off. It's, it's going to be some different factors for a lot of y'all, right? But we all been there. No judgment here. Just just showing you how to get out of it or how to work around it. Um, D, Dr. CRNA Bay, I could refer you to a credit repair company. I, I do think that's something that you could do on your own. Uh, I used to have a credit repair business. I stopped doing credit repair because I feel like more people need education, right? Uh, I used to fix people credit up and then in less than three months, it's right back messed up. They right back not paying their bills, not paying their credit card. So for me, I, I realized that our people need education. So, um, but but you can definitely, um, off the top of my head, I, I know Jerry uh, with Fly Credit Repair Services you can inbox me, uh, CR, Dr. Ciara Bay, and I can send you somebody. Yeah, because off the top of my head, I'm, I'm messing her name up. I don't want to put the wrong name out here. Fly Credit, and she's two Y's, F-L-Y-Y credit.com. She has a credit repair company and business. Um, so how long? Okay, I kind of answered that question already. Some of y'all that got a similar question, I'm not answering the same questions. How long after opening I answered that one? I need a double tap session countdown. Let's roll, y'all. We've been answering some questions on here. We've been on here almost an hour, right? So um, I'll be on here a little bit longer, but let's do a double tap countdown session for me. So what's a double tap countdown session? You take this finger or this thumb and you do this. And you see those little red hearts over there? This is how you all help me and my page and my channel, right? So I'll continue being on here and answering questions for you, but I do need you to do a double tap countdown session. All right, let's row. A one, a two. I'm gonna drink some water cause I'm thirsty, I'm parched. Hey, Kaden. <laughs> my godson on here. Hey, Kaden. Brandon Hicks, you say you explained this very well, Miss Stewart. Thank you. I could lock in and listen to you all day. 
You know I love you, Brandon. Thank you for your support, as always. Um, but I am gonna put a video up on maybe on this, on like showing a screenshot and stuff on YouTube, probably by Friday for Finance Friday, so you all could kind of visualize and see what I'm showing TikTok for those of you all that are on YouTube who don't have TikTok. Um, but I like TikTok because it allows me to be able to share my screen. I can, you know, I can show you a bunch of different stuff. So TikTok is a very good platform to be on. But I am going, I did do like an eight minute video today that I filmed for YouTube. So I'm actually showing my screen on YouTube, YouTube showing you all the promissory note with the breakdown of it so you can actually see it in black and white. So stay tuned, YouTube, for Friday. We'll drop that Navy Federal video for you. It'll be a very short version, right? It's like six to eight minutes, um, just so just in case any of you all were wondering, okay? Um, Capone, love that. Tax liens is definitely a move as well. Definitely a move as well. Mobile home investing, t-shirt business is popping. Everybody want a logo, want they brand on, right? Um, but it's a lot of different business ideas. I don't like just throwing out random ideas because I'm a, I'm an entrepreneur. My, my head, I always got ideas, right? Um, but I don't like that because I just feel like throwing a bunch of random ideas. That, that don't help you. Every single one of you are different. Every single one of you have a different understanding. And, you know, so that's why I really say figure out what you love. Figure out something that you could do every single day that can make money. So the other thing that I'm getting ready to do is open up a candy store. So one of my friends, she has a candy store. Um, and she's been asking me for years to get in on the candy store. So that's another thing I'm getting ready to do. I need a cash cow. So a cash cow business is a big, the money is just coming in. Usually you're able to make money every single day, daily sales, right? So if I had a restaurant or a candy store, you have foot traffic coming in every single day, right? Because you, you have a t-shirt business, you may not sell a shirt every day, right? Especially if you're promoting it online. You may not be selling a mobile home every single day, right? You may not be selling uh, a tax lien sale every single day. So for me, in my mind, the next business that I'm getting ready to start is a cash, what we call a cash cow. I need a business that could be making money every single day, right? Because on average especially in the summertime, especially if you get a, a candy store around a school where kids are, that one school will sell you out, right? So my friend, she's right across the street from a school. Her candy business in the summertime easily does thirty dollars to $40,000 a month. Easily can do $1,000 a day. Easy, right? So that's another something to think of. If you live, I saw a girl on TikTok the other day. She was selling candy. She had she was in her house. She had a whole uh, one of them storage freight kind of things. And she had candy with different numbers. And, and people was on. She had 1,000 views, y'all. She had 1,000 people on there talking about how to buy candy. Like, I couldn't believe it. I was like, damn, that's a good idea. Like, literally, imagine this behind me with the stand. And I got all different kind of candy. She probably had like 20 different types of candy. And she was like, yeah, where you at? I mean, and it was people on there. I didn't realize that, right? Some of us, we grew up in big cities. I'm from Chicago, born and raised here my whole life. Some of y'all live in small towns. And I didn't realize that some of these small towns, y'all don't have kin, right? <laughs> right? Yeah, it's certain things that y'all don't have that us in the big city do. So big city people, y'all got to know and understand some of the stuff that we are privy to that other people in these smaller towns and cities don't have. So think about that. Think about where, where you live, right? What is something that's missing there? What's, some, what's a need that is out there that you could possibly feed, right? So that's one of the biggest things in business. That's business 101. Find a need and fulfill it. It's real simple, right? So think about that. Because I was like, baby, I'm about to start pushing my candy before I even get my stuff. I'm about to set up a whole new page just for my candy stuff. 
and start selling it online just like she was. Because she had like 1,500 viewers. I'm on here with 177. She had 1,500 people on there trying to buy candy. <laughs> I was like, well, damn. You learn something new every day on TikTok, baby. All right, I'm sorry, y'all. Let me get back to the questions because I got to be off of here by, let's say, 8.45. I got a 9 o'clock call with a, with a tax client. So, uh, yes, I do have a trust fund. So, yes, I do. I do have a trust. I have two different trusts. I have a personal trust and I have a business trust. So, I have a trust and then I have holding company and then I have the LLC. So, the trust owns the holding company. The holding company owns the LLCs and we go from there, right? I do have a five-day wealth challenge that I workshop that I was teaching that in. Uh, we'll probably bring that out again next month, July. But yes, I definitely have a trust. The trust is the best way for you to be able to protect your assets. So any of you all who have kids, you have any kind of asset, you have a home, a car, a life insurance policy, your trust can own your life insurance policy. So instead of you leaving the money to your kids, especially if you are not teaching your kids money management and financial literacy, a lot of you all die and you leave $100,000 to your kid and they blow it in less than a year. I have seen this in, 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 in my 18 years of being in financial services. That's the most horrible thing that I would say I have seen on a consistent, regular basis is if y'all are not teaching these kids how to manage that money when you die, you leaving them a life insurance policy is not winning. You would be better setting it up as a trust, putting stipulations in the trust, allow the trust to be the beneficiary of your life insurance policy and manage the money that way. Okay, that's a whole nother other conversation we'll have for another day. I could bring my trust advisor on and we can maybe do a live session with y'all, but if you ain't teaching these kids how to manage that money, you are doing them a disservice because I have seen it my entire life in financial services. I hate to say that. That's that's one of the worst things that I see. And, and especially with people who look like me, especially, especially with us. Um, all right. So let's see. How long were you a member? I've been I've been a, a member member with Navy Federal since like 2009. So I've had that account for over 13 years. I got 20K TD Bank last year for working capital. All right. TD Bank is a good bank. Truist Bank is another good bank. Truist is another good bank. They're not a credit union, but they remind me of one. They're very similar uh, to a credit union with what they offer. Um, all right, I did a recap, so y'all already was asking that. So, what was the payment by week for every two weeks? I don't even feel this stuff. So, I don't do the whole by week and the every two week thing, I just do the monthly payment. The payment was 538 or some change. Yes, every bank likes direct deposit, Jay. But a lot of people don't have direct deposit. So if you don't have direct deposit, then definitely, you know, put some money in there and use the account. So that way they, they know what you're, you know, that you're a real person. Because like I said, a lot of people set stuff up. Um, and then they don't understand. When can I get an increase on my credit card? So if you have if you have had your credit card at least six months to a year and they have not increased, you can always call and ask them for an increase. Um, so yeah, I ask for an increase at minimum annually, but uh, but you can technically ask for an increase like every six months, but at minimum annually for sure. I only, I don't recommend anything. Let me just also state this, well, okay? Um, I'm very big with talking to you directly with who you are and what you have doing. It's too many of y'all on here for me to be recommending anything because I don't know any of you individually and what your goals are, what your money is, what your credit is. So I'm not recommending anything. Now, if you want to do an unsecured loan, I think that's Tiara, Tiara, um, 
I would just say, what's the game plan? What's the strategy? Because the difference with an unsecured loan is they're giving you the money. So one, you want to definitely make sure you can afford the monthly payment. And then two, when you're doing the unsecured loan, why are you doing it? What are you doing it for? Are you getting an unsecured loan to buy a mobile home? Are you getting an unsecured loan to make more money? Right. But, but my mind is always how are how am I going to make more money if I'm going to go and get an unsecured loan, which I'm going to get. I'm about to do a hundred thousand dollar business loan. And what am I going to do? I'm buying property. I'm buying about five mobile homes and then I'm buying one fix and flip. Right. That's money, because within this within this next six months, I can flip that hundred thousand into about three hundred thousand. You get what I'm saying? So. It always should be a game plan. You should never, ever be applying for credit willy nilly. You should always have a game plan and an action plan on why you're doing it, how you're doing it, and what's the reason and what's the end goal. That's the best I could say. Okay. Okay. Again, this is a secured loan that I'm talking to you all about. So there is no credit score that it has to be. People with a 500 credit score have gotten approved for it okay um you know about the shared credit account with navy federal whatever you transfer into your savings account they match i just walked in told my brother yes you can dispute items off for check systems yes you can set up a consultation link in my bio the link in my bio i have a pick my brain session is 77 dollars for 20 minutes my business pick my brain session is 90 minutes for $329. But the pick my brain session for 20 minutes is a real popular Q&A session with me. So that is if you got some basic questions, you need a little more clarity. Uh, that's a popular uh, consulting, uh, consulting appointment with me is the pick my brain session. Melrose, great statement, but only for people who are responsible. Don't go adding them kids to y'all credit if y'all are not paying the credit cards on time, okay? <laughs> if you are not responsible with your credit, do not be on here adding your kids on there because you ain't going to do nothing but mess them up, okay? So great, great, great strategy, Melrose. Add your kids as authorized users, and that way they can start getting the 800 credit score right out of high school. Very, very true. Uh, when I worked in the bank, I did have a lot of other nationality people who would come in at 17, 18, opening up accounts with an 800 credit score because they were on their parents' accounts, right? Um, so it's, that's definitely a great strategy. But just make sure that you are paying your bills on time before you do that. Um, check systems is a third-party system that the banks report to. So if you ever burnt up an account, Burn up means you ever let an account close, you owe the bank money, you got a card, credit card, you had a checking account that overdrew. If you have any kind of balance with a bank, then check systems is the one that reports it. So that's what check systems is. And your accounts stay on check systems for five years. Uh, can you dispute check systems account? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Um, just... Same way that you just asked, how do you check check system? You go online, type in check systems, and it's checks, C H E X, X like xylophone. So, not like the actual check that we write out, it's C H E X systems, checks systems. So, it has an X at the end, <laughs> which shows negative. Do not open accounts. <laughs> okay. So you'll type in check systems in Google and it'll give you the website um, and you can request your report by phone. You can request it online. You can request it a couple of different ways. Um, you're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. I just don't have the time. I know it's easy. OK, I understand that. CR bait. A lot of people don't have the time. That's why you pay somebody. I completely understand. Uh, our manual, I didn't see your question. It went away. I'm only seeing, can you answer mine, please? I share with you when you all, when it's a lot of you all on here, questions go away. I don't see everybody question. And as I refresh the screen, the old questions go away for new questions. So you want to retype it now while I'm still on here. 
We got seven more minutes. Uh, anything finances, I like that for sure. People need education, definitely. Uh, trustee, you can get with an enrolled agent. I have somebody that I can refer you to. Uh, you could do an offer and compromise if you owe the IRS. I had a client who owed the IRS 100000 My enrolled agent did an offer and compromise for 10000 and they accepted it. So they saved $90,000. Um, so yeah, if you want, again, click the link in my bio. That's, that's how you get in contact with me. Um, and I can refer you and give you the information from there. Inquiries does hurt your score. I won't say drastically, except when you go to the auto loan place. Like when you go to the dealership and they run 30 different lenders through you and now your score done dropped 30 to 40 points, that's drastic. But if you just applying for one credit card here and there, then no, your score will probably drop three to five points. Um, just open the 12 one 501 pledge. Is that good? I don't know, Isabel. You said just open the twelve month five hundred one pledge loan. I don't. That doesn't really tell me anything. You said twelve month, but I don't understand what the five hundred one pledge is. I'm not a fan of IRAs at all. Not a fan. I'm not locking my money up until I'm sixty nine and a half. I think they just updated it to seventy one and a half, seventy two. I'm not a fan of IRAs. I'm not a fan of 401ks unless they matching you. And especially if you're not paying attention to it. If you letting your employee manage your 401k, you are not winning. Did y'all see all the people, all them seniors when the market crashed in 2008 who was losing their money? Okay, this, again, this is the system that are taught. Put your money in an IRA, put your money in a 401k that you can't touch. 50, 60 years until you 60 and 70. Do that even sound right? Like when, when I say it out loud, do that even sound right? Oh, you got an IRA, but you can't touch it till you 70 years old. I'm 41. So I got to put this money in here for 30 years. Y'all, the bank could play with my money, flip it 25,000 different ways, but I can't touch my own money for 30 years. That's the system that I'm talking about, that they have brainwashed a lot of y'all to believe. No, I don't do IRA. I don't do, I don't have a job to work 401k. Um, I'm self-employed. So I have my own 401k. And honestly, the, the self-employed 401k, we could put up to $50,000 in there. And that's a tax deduction. So I do recommend it to my solo entrepreneurs to do their own solo 401k because the tax write-off and benefit is better for us. But for those of y'all that's working like a regular job, nah, that's how they keep you brainwashed. That's how they keep you brainwashed. Dave Ramsey, old school. I, I'm not, you know, he, he got his thing. I got mad. He old school. But do you know how many ways you could flip that same money that you're putting into an IRA before uh, you turn 70? So I'm a, I'm a, we ain't even finna go there. I'm done. I said what I said. Lisa Michelle, smart lady. <laughs> Smart lady, you not on the matrix. So a lot of people stuck in the matrix, baby. But do that even sound right when I said it out of my mouth? You, you cannot touch this IRA until you 70 years old. And then if you do touch it, they penalize you. If you withdraw the money, they got the nerve to tax you. Because I do taxes, so I see the 1099 retirement form that they send y'all, right? So when you took $20,000 out, they done took 40, they didn't, they didn't, uh, gave you a 40%, uh, what is it called? Um, early withdrawal penalty. Dude, what, what the, do that even sound right? So I can't even take $20,000 of my own money. Do that sound right? Hell no, Whitney, it don't sound right. But again, we have been brainwashed in this country to listen to that bull crap. And do that crap. And that's why your grandparents and parents lost all that money in 2008 when the market crashed. Baby, bye. You know how many times I could flip that same money that I'm putting up? Baby, bye. Ain't no way. No. Me personally, no. <laughs> 
Now, <laughs> you could be invested that money so much better. So much better. Let that little bit of money that you put in there sit there. Figure out another game plan. Holla at your girl. All right. All right. We got five minutes, y'all. Uh, last of the 80 say, I'm about to buy a Sprinter van and let my brothers do Amazon deliveries. Come on. Come on, last of the 80s. That's what I'm talking about, baby. Group economics. You and the brothers partnering up. That's what I'm talking about. Let's roll. Get the whole family rich. Let's roll. Let's roll. I love that. I got into vending and ATM machines. Come on, Mike Leroy. Come on, entrepreneurs on here. Using y'all mindset and skill set on here. Come on here. Look at these black men on here. I'm talking about these businesses they got. Come on, King. Uh, you know the best candy stores back in this day start, started the home-based stores. Definitely. My uncle had a home base. We had a basement candy store. My uncle had a basement candy store. So that penny candy, right? How to how to inquiries affect my credit score? Uh, I kind of answered that one already. Everybody love candy, right? That's what I'm saying. When I saw the TikTok girl, I was like, <laughs> I was proud. I was like, baby, come on here. You better, baby. She had a whole back storage thing full of candy. I mean, she on here selling that candy. I couldn't believe she had 1,500 people watching her to buy candy, y'all. I was like, oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. It's so much sauce I could give you. I got so many ideas. Come on. Definitely generational wealth. Don't get discouraged, user. Just do your own work. It's a, let me let me tell you something. People on here usually that's that's a naysayer. Ninety nine point nine percent of the time, them people ain't never did crap a day in their life. They don't even have a business. They just be on here commenting and talking and what you shouldn't do. And then most of them people don't even do nothing. So when you see people on pages like man or somebody that's trying to share passive income streams or, you know, Amazon business, whatever they talking about. And you see a bunch of naysayers, 99.9% of them people ain't never did the business a day in their life. They mind just so limited that they can't think bigger or they watch somebody else and well, my cousin did this. And you know what I'm saying? So don't allow no naysayer to stop you from doing what you do. People told me my whole life in Chicago, I wasn't going to make no money teaching taxes and credit. I wouldn't be where I'm at today if I listened to the people that who was a naysayer, right? But God gave me uh, uh, an idea and it came into fruition. Simple as that. that. That's it. If he give you the idea, if he put it in your mindset and, and you can't sleep at night, you constantly thinking about it, that means that is for you. That means he is leading you to the water and you're supposed to drink, okay? You're not supposed to allow all the outside noise to affect you because this wasn't a board meeting, right? When God have a, a, a word with me, he have a word with me. He don't have a word with me and the rest of y'all. This ain't a board meeting. This ain't a group meeting, right? So when God talking to you, he talking to you. It ain't for nobody else to understand. It ain't for your mama, your daddy, even if your spouse don't understand. Oh, well, he ain't had a conversation with you, wifey, husband. He had the conversation with me, right? So that's what you got to know and understand. And if you're going to be an entrepreneur, I'm going to tell you right now, you have to be confident in your decision, in your idea, in your business. You cannot be like teeter, teeter topping. You get what I'm saying? Oh, is this going to work? Oh, it ain't. Like you're going to have to build up your confidence to know and understand that your decision is your decision. And just because you're going to always have people see the vision and who don't get it but that don't matter right so don't ever allow comments and people on the post to stop you from doing something that you want to do because 99 percent of the world are naysayers this that's why you only have less than 10 percent of the world that's an entrepreneur that's wealthy right 90 percent of america is broke living check to check 
don't know how to get out of debt. You get what I'm saying? It's a reason. It's a system. It's mental. And if you don't got the mental willpower and or you don't know how to get off the matrix, then it's, it's just that. You get what I'm saying? And I tell y'all all the time, you got to have Kanye. You got to have Kanye. Uh, um, confidence. I'm from Chicago, baby. I got Kanye confidence. You can't tell me nothing. I don't give a damn what you think, how you feel, none of that. Because when you're an entrepreneur, you have to know and understand that. You you know what I'm saying? I just had to throw that little word out there real quick for somebody on here. <laughs> All right? You say, I can't wait to see your show. Baby, come on and claim that for me. Come on here and claim that for me. I touch and agree. I touch and agree. I touch and agree. Because we want, we own it, baby. We are on it. <laughs> Miss Kira, you say you are definitely talking to me. Then I'm talking to you, boo. Let's roll. Let's roll. I mean, I could give y'all, I've been doing this over 14 years. Only person that ever believed in my idea was my mom. I love my daddy to death. May he rest in peace, rest in heaven. But even my daddy was like, you show you want to do this entrepreneur thing? <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Because again, we are brainwashed. It's a system to keep us down and keep us mentally drained to think that all we are here for is to go to work for somebody else and pay bills. Uh, uh No, right? I changed my whole life because I fixed my credit. I fixed my credit. I, I was in already financial services. Once I got to work for the bank, I really learned a whole nother other game. When I started working for the bank in 2008, baby, I learned all type of back end stuff, how the banks play with you, how IRA, 401k, how all this is a system, again, to keep you down, right? So I thank God I was able to experience that. And so now I share my experience with the world, right? But in the beginning, did nobody believe in what I was doing? Not one person, but my mama, right? And she still ain't understand. She, your mama gonna always support you, right? But she didn't understand really what this was. This was a gift that God had gave me. So if you got an idea, baby, I'm talking to you. Yes, I am. You on here on this live, at this part of the live, we done with talking about the damn credit. I'm over that, okay? This part of the live is for you mentally. Because you need that. And being a black business owner, you also need to know and understand your value. Do not allow the people who look like you to, to determine your pricing and your value. Okay? Because they don't understand who they are. So the only reason why they don't understand and value you is because they don't value themselves. So when you get people that always want to you know, double talk you and, oh, why you got to charge this and why you got to charge that? Just bless them, baby. Bless you and go on about your day, all right? And then go in your room or wherever you talk to God and ask God for clients and people who value you. Ask God that when you start this business to have clients and people who value you and what you bring to the table, your price is your price. Simple as that. Your price is your price. We ain't finagling and going at. Because again, I share this with you because I did that crap. I wasn't making no money in my business for almost five years because I was helping people, lowering my prices, overworked. You get what I'm saying? So I'm going to end this. I'm going to end something tonight with y'all. A uh, client of mine, uh, I, had a, I had an experience today. And this is, this is another part that's a part of communication right? And this is why we have to learn to communicate with each other, right? So when I moved in here in 2018 in this building, I was on another side of the building. So I met this young man who has his own, um, what does he do? Like um, tailoring business, right? Long to the short, he had asked me to do his taxes, but I looked at his paperwork and he had everything. So me just being me in the way that I talk, Right. I was like, man, you don't need me. You could do this on your own. So I'm thinking that was it. Well, today he ended up seeing me when I was coming in. And I noticed every time I see him, you know, it's just kind of real short. Hi, bye. 
not no real conversation. And so today I ended up seeing him because it's prime season. And so he, um, I was like, hey, you know, how you doing? Blah, 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 blah. And he was like, hey, how are you? Are you on the side? With blah, 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 blah. So he was like, I haven't been to your office space. I could come up now and see it. So I was like, cool, come on up and you could see it, right? So brought him in and he sat down. And he said, Patrice, can I be transparent with you? I was like, please do, <laughs> right? And so I said, come on, come to the back. So we went around to my office part over here. Y'all don't know. I'm going to keep YouTube. I'm going to keep you on here. Okay. I'll show to TikTok later. But TikTok, this is my office. I got some more space back here behind the back where we go and sit by ourselves and talk, right? So I said, come on, sit down. Belong to the shore, he said, you know, if you notice the last couple of times I've seen you, I've been a little short with you. And I was like, I noticed. And he said, well, the last interaction we had, you kind of hurt my feelings. And I said, damn, what, you know, what, what happened? What I do? And he said, well, when I gave you my taxes, you, 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 you was like, you could do, you know, you, you don't need me. You could do this on your own. And he was like, I kind of took that as you saying, I can't afford you, right? <laughs> so I was like, damn, <laughs> is that how I came? Because <laughs> he was like, you know, you always talking to me. You was always talking to me about if it don't make money, it don't make sense. Is you making some money? Is it making some money? Is it making some money? And so he was like, I just felt like you was like, oh, your little taxes, I, I hammer me do your own taxes and i was like oh my god like not like that at all and so i had to apologize to him because i i one thing in business you all people are gonna feel away sometimes and even though we don't mean to come off that way we still should acknowledge their feelings right so even though i didn't purposely do anything i still apologize so i was like i'm sorry that you felt that way. I'm sorry that it's taking you two years to say something to me, you know, about this because we could have nipped this in the bud a long time ago. I was like, but you know me, I'm a straightforward person. I'm not going to do your taxes and take money from you if I didn't need to. Right. So in his case, he had everything. And when I say everything as an entrepreneur, when you come to get your taxes done, you got to have receipts, documents, a folder, profit and loss support. He had all of that. So I'm like, you can just plug it in and play. You don't need me, right? So in my mind, I'm thinking I'm saving him some money because he did not need me. He could have done that on his own. But in his mind, I came off like, mm, nah, you ain't got enough money for me. And, and I'm like, I don't know how you thought that. But he also said that that was him internalizing how he felt about himself because he was down about the money that he was making because as an entrepreneur he felt bad that he wasn't making the money that he felt he should be making so internally he had his own triggers you get what i'm saying and so sometimes in business we do have to really kind of pay attention to how we say things to our clients um, because it can trigger somebody. And when, and one thing that he shared with me was finances are a trigger for people, especially if you don't have it together. Right. So if you, if you may feel like some of the stuff that I'm saying, like I'm coming at you or saying something to you because you're triggered, because maybe, you know, like I ain't been doing right, or I'm not doing this, or I'm not doing that. And so when somebody says it and acknowledges it, sometimes it could seem harm it could it could seem hurtful right but anybody that's watching me on this platform yes i'm a straight shooter i'm not about the bs but i'm not a person that will ever be like you don't got no money enough money for me you get what i'm saying i'm i'm not that that's never my mo right and so when he said that today i was like damn okay patrice you're gonna have to really kind of pay attention to how you are um how you reject a client, I'm going to say that. Because in his case, I just didn't feel he needed to pay me the money that I was charging when he had everything. You get what I'm saying? So 
today that was a, a, a eye opener for me and a learning point for us both because he also had expressed that, you know, ultimately it wasn't you. It was me internalizing how I was feeling. But when you said it, it just made me think like, oh, I don't got enough money for you. You know what I mean? And so I was like, dang, you know, it just, it, I just didn't expect him to say that. But the learning lesson was the communication, right? That we were able to sit down and have a conversation and hear each other out and come to a happy medium, right? So we, we cool again, <laughs> as he said, when he left, like we cool again, you know? And I'm like, I really wish you would have said something two years ago when that happened, you know? Um, Cause that's definitely not my MO. And I know some people have said that when I'm on here, like, oh, you harsh or you mean, I'm just not a bullshitting kind of person. I'm a straight shooter, right? So I don't like to beat around the bush with all that extra stuff. Like, I'm going to just tell you, the re you know, that's why I call myself the realist tax and business strategist. And sometimes you're not used to people being real and honest with you. It's so much fake and phony out here that sometimes when you hear somebody being real raw and honest with you, it's a little taken aback sometimes. You're like, oh, 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 okay. <laughs> right? right, right? But just know and understand it's all from a place of love, all right? You, you, and, and in business, you're always going to, you're not going to appease everybody. It's just, that's just business, right? So no matter if you're doing everything right, it's still somebody that's going to have something to say. It's still somebody that's going to feel some kind of way. You can't appease everybody. So just do what you can do. Keep the lines of communication open with your clients, your audience, all right? And that's it. You say that is your brand, real money. Okay. <laughs> I like that, Elizabeth Holmes, real money. <laughs> but I didn't want to share that. I wanted to share that story because I just was like, it, it, it kind of had threw me off a little bit today. Not necessarily threw me off, but you know what I mean? I just wasn't expecting him to say that. Um Natoya, you say, I love budgeting, but I don't know how to turn it into a business. Mm. Stay tuned, Natoya, because on my birthday, June 7th, I'm dropping my coaching program. So I have, I am finally launching Solo to Squad coaching program. So those of you all who are trying to understand the business, figure out what business you want to do, I'm going to give you the tools that you need to start the business, how to start it how to come up with content, courses, the ebook strategy, right? So stay tuned. And I'm not going to bust you over the head with it neither. It's only $3,000 to get in the program. And then I'm going to also offer a payment plan as well, okay? Um, but if you love budgeting, people need that. It is somebody out here that will create you, that will pay you to help them budget. If you create a program, you can create a budgeting program. You could be on live just like I'm doing. You could do it in a Zoom workshop you could show them you could you got a budgeting template i'm sure you have a budgeting template already you could sell that template somebody will pay for your template because they don't know how to make it right i have a budgeting workshop that i sell and i have a template in there it's part of my program so you can definitely turn that what you love into a business okay you can definitely do that uh, can a secure loan help repair? Yes, a secure loan or a credit card definitely helps build and repair your credit um, faster. You know, uh, you could say you could touch it, but it's taxed real bad, real bad, real bad, real bad to the point it don't make sense that they even taxing it. You say, don't forget the kids' college savings or prepaid plan. <laughs> Mike Lee, where I look. I don't want to. I don't want to piss nobody off. Okay, because <laughs> so so for those of y'all that's got your third eye open, you already know and understand. We got to get the rest of the people off the matrix. We got to help the other people get their third eye open so they can understand what we're talking about. But I don't want people to feel some kind of way because I'm saying, you know, you you got an IRA or four hundred one k, right? Because you you don't you only know what they're what they taught you. Right. But stay tuned to my page and my channel and you'll learn a lot more. All right. So we, I want to make sure that I'm respectful of people's process and where they at right now. Um, property management. I like property management. I like property management. 
I like property management. I'm in real estate heavy right now. Real big in real estate right now. I'm, I'm real big on real estate. So property management, yes. That's why we do junk removal, right? That's got to do with construction, real estate. Um, you say this 45 minutes was more valuable than the four years of college. Come on here, Lisa. <laughs> Come on here, Lisa. Let me take a screenshot of that, baby. We're going to take a screenshot of that statement. Oh, shit. Sorry, y'all. <laughs> I'm trying to take a screenshot and messed up. Let me get that. There we go. If y'all see some of my uh some of y'all comments on my uh on my feedback page on my website, don't be surprised. <laughs> Cause I've been taking, I've been taking shots. YouTube, let me get out of here. Cause I'm on TikTok answering their questions. I'm done. We going off. I'm getting ready to log off. So thank you all. We have been on here one hour and 35 minutes. Make sure that you subscribe to the page, to the channel. Also, come on over to TikTok and like the page and the channel. Tap in. I'm out, YouTube. Because I'll be having to do.